empowering active aging and longevity through digital health. Uh, good morning, all of you. We're, we're starting a little bit early. Um, I think the, the keynote ran off from the previous thing and, 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 and ran out of things to say, which is kind of rare. So uh, good news is our panel here. So I'm going to invite our panel up, please. Come take your places. So just for a bit of background, we're going to do a slightly, slightly different panel um, than advertised. Uh, a, because I think one of our speakers isn't here. Uh, yet, uh, but we'll wait and see if he turns up. Um, Greg Elliott, if you're around, um, someone will go and find him. Just by way of introduction, my name's Andy Bleeden. I work for the ECH Alliance. Uh, we are a member organization, a connector. So we uh, bring our members together across the globe in ecosystems, uh, ranging from Argentina to Zambia, Zimbabwe to, to uh, Australia, A to Z and back again. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about those, come and see me afterwards. We're there to connect dots in digital health in a number of different areas. One of those areas is, is the area of, of, of healthy aging. So we've all been familiarized with the concept of healthy aging. And today we're going to look at this concept here a bit deeper around using digital health in the field of longevity. What we're going to do with our panel today, we've got two questions. Um, only because I've got a bad memory, so I thought two is good. Um, I'm going to ask our panelists to introduce themselves and also then to say what they think are some of the needs around um, ageing and active ageing. And then secondly, we'll go back and ask them, what does good look like? Because this is a common topic in every single ecosystem we've been involved with. And, and I'm interested to hear from our panel what they think are some of the crucial needs. There won't be any slides. There's going to be no sales pitches. Uh, this is about giving their input, input from their background. So please, I'm going to introduce our first speaker, uh, Gopi. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Gopi Koti Suran. I'm co-founder of Cardiac Wellness Institute. I'm based in Chennai, southern part of India. Um, prior to this, I was the CEO for the wearables business of Philips, based out of Amsterdam. And uh, that was one of the first... Uh, uh, wearables in the world. So, uh, you know, I got to see how digital technology works and how it fails. Uh, and also, I'm an investor in Ankura Health, which was here yesterday. Some of you must have heard them, uh, who are working closely with hospitals in the European ecosystem to make sure they're delivering on the digital health platform. So that's my introduction. And, and what, what do you think, what, what sort of a key needs? The key needs, um, uh, it's fairly interesting ever since I've relocated back to India. Uh, one of those things that I've seen is the social structure makes such a big difference. So uh, the elderly in India are actually playing a vital role in raising their grandkids. <laughs> the parents are busy working. <clears throat> Because we still see a lot of multi-generational homes in India where everybody lives together. And uh, the parents are really working hard. The good news is India's per capita GDP is going up. Uh, but the bad news is the parents are missing at home, right? So this role is being played by uh, the grandparents, the seniors. Um, in a sense, it provides them with an active lifestyle. They are mm -hmm. the ones who are dropping the kids at school, picking them up following up on the homework. There's a lot of things that they're doing. Uh, but I don't think they're equipped to deal with the stress that's associated with dealing with kids, right? So at a later age, it's just, and the kids are too smart to be handled by the grandparents full time. So that's one of those things that we're seeing. And the other need, in my view, that one of the key needs is um, if I look at who is most prone to getting a, you know, cardiac problem it's somebody who's already had a cardiac problem, right? So if we have a great way of providing secondary prevention, right, making sure that people who have already had a problem can be addressed, their lifestyles can be modified slightly, such that they have a great longevity and a good quality of life, I think that's a pretty significant part of the problem at this point in time. If we can solve that, that'll be great. Thank you for that. Ola Yinka, what do you think? Tell us about yourself okay. and then what you think the needs are. Hi, everyone. My name is Ola Yinka Aremu. I'm originally from Nigeria, but I'm based in Ireland. So I'm going to be like a missed culture today. I'm the founder and CEO of NCO Consulting. 
why I still work with the HSE. So I work in the capacity as a patient flow manager uh, in the HSE hospital. My area of interest and what NCO is all about is care coordination and integrated care. So as a nurse by background, and, you know, we know that nurses are care managers, so to say. And looking at the global perspective and population of older people, so my area is more of older people, and that's why active aging is of interest to me. Uh, so older people happen to be you know, the largest population of you know, patients that we have. And year in, year out, we have that large turnout. You know, even the WHO said it, that there's going to be double, you know, even by 2050 of the population. So why we have a lot of people, older people coming in, I think the interest and why we want to empower is they shouldn't be coming back. So there's a lot of readmission rates for older people and we need to look at that. So I would say the very most important thing to do is aging in place. So other people want to be at home. They don't want to be in nursing home. If you ask majority of them and the families, they prefer them to be at home. So Ireland has a very strong um, you know, uh, initiative of slaughter care, integrated care, and you know, enhanced community care. So why can't we you know, focus more on the care at home in the community rather than in the hospital? And how we can do this is making sure that from admission there, you know, identifying the, the risk of the admission right from ED, so which is where I, I work you know, at the moment. So ensuring that there is the, you know, our effective care transition through the hospital and back to the community. Okay. So that's the first, yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Pavel, over to you. Thank you, Andy. So I'm Pavel Spieboda. In one sentence, I am uh, the brain health ecosystem and brain capital builder. Um, in a little bit more than one sentence, um, I run a company called Neurocentry, which provides solutions that are policy-based and uh, that rely on uh, ecosystem building for brain health and mental health. Uh, in the past, until uh, um, August, I had been Director General of the Human Brain Project, so one of uh, the flagship programs uh, of research in the area of brain science and CEO of eBrains, the uh, infrastructure for brain uh, studies. Um, now, le, what is my uh, answer to your question about the, the need, Andy? Um, um, my answer is uh, the need for life cycle approach. Um, and we have active aging and longevity um, in one sentence in the title, uh, but uh, they are different. Um, active aging is, is one thing and longevity is, uh, is, is something else. Uh, um, and there, no, longevity starts uh, at birth, if not before. That's when one needs to uh, start paying attention uh, to one's um, health. Um, and the life cycle um, approach is desperately needed um, in order to uh, accompany that journey for uh, each and every one of us. Now, in the area I uh, work in, in brain health, uh, this is the realization of the need of life cycle approach is, uh, I would say, relatively new at scale, at least. I mean, a lot of people had known this for, forever, but, um, but when it comes to systems level approach, it is new. And it has to do with uh, a revolution which is also taking place in understanding of the disease and uh, in understanding how uh, important role prevention plays. So even in, in disorders like dementia or stroke, um, the modifiable risk factors are huge. Uh, they are 40% uh, in dementia and 50% in stroke. Uh, you know, you would, you would never have thought that this is uh, the case, but it is. So what it means is that you need to start very early by addressing these modifiable uh, risk factors, and therefore life cycle approach is key. Okay, so we're starting early. Um, I'm 54, so it might be a little bit late to start early. However, tomorrow is always a good day. Okay, so we, we've had a broad snapshot there of what, what, what some, some of the needs are. I'm particularly interested in... Oh, lovely, thank you. Um, I'm particularly interested in what good looks like. So this isn't a, 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 say, a, a chance for Gopi to say, well, actually, it's what I do, and Pavel to say, <laughs> that's what I do, and, and, and I'll look... I'll just say the same thing. This is about who's getting this right, because 
this is not new, okay? I've been working in this field for <clears throat> years, and, and we started looking at active aging when I started work. And the ideas haven't changed. The excuses have just got longer. So, tell us, please, I'll come to you first. Tell us what good looks like. Where have you seen it before? Well, um, good is good when it's good. <laughs> uh, for anything older people, you know, I believe every country is working towards it. You know, it's global, so it's global and everybody is working towards it. But I would say I'll be looking forward to, again, coming back to integrated care. So there's no, there's no point having it in papers. We have it in papers and policies, but the implementation, it's questionable. How integrated is our integrated care? We have the physiotherapists, we have the, you know, the pharmacists, we have the doctors, we have the you know, caregivers, all, they're all silos, but how are we working together? And this brings digital health. Yep. We can have an interoperable system you know, that connects yep. all, you know, all stakeholders together. So that is the good I'm looking where, for. And where, where is this now? Where, where, is, where is good? Well, I, it's hard to pick a country, but I know the U.S. are, you know, leading greatly in digital yep. health. I'm aware of Israel when it comes to imaging and things okay. like that. I'm aware of South Korea as well. But Ireland is doing well as well, so I have to sell my home. Yeah. It's doing well, especially slanter care, care, you know, yep. enhanced community care, which is, uh, you know, very, very great. Thank you. Excellent. Gopi. Tell us, tell us where, where, who, who makes you jealous in this? You know, one of those places where uh, I've lived uh, and I see uh, major changes happening is in the Netherlands. And mm. uh, some of the leading um, medical centrums there are trying to see if, um, as a patient gets dis discharged, can they be provided with something in a box, as they call it, where yep. there's some hardware plus a significant amount of a digital platform going with it where the clinician is able to interact with the patient slash consumer as they go out and help them make those small minor modifications in behavior which helps them lead a higher quality of life for a longer period of time. And I think the healthcare system uh, overall supports that and the clinician is still supported in doing okay. this. Where I see transformational ch uh, changes potentially happening is if I pl uh, pick a place like Abu Dhabi, for instance, where the government is taking the initiative, um, tying up with clinics like Cleveland Clinic, bringing in the best practices and pushing it through to their entire population where they do a uh, the risk stratification right up front, provide uh, primary prevention, secondary prevention. It has not happened. We have not mm -hmm. seen the results yet. Uh, but the steps that they're taking and um, uh, what they're implementing with the best, some of the best in the world coming there and they're throwing money at it. So okay. hopefully that could lead to something good in the future. Okay. Right now it is not, but it could get there. Uh, okay. That's what I would be jealous of. Abu Dhabi, that's where, that's where we need to go. <laughs> I'm booking my flight. Pavel. Andy, for, for me the good is still an imaginary uh, country because... Uh, what it would need to be based on to be good is uh, an outcomes-based um, health system, right? And we tend not to have those mm. in, in most countries and in most uh, locations. Uh, we tend to have, well, fee-based systems. Yep. And the incentives, therefore, are not the ones where you would need. Um, I was in a, in a panel the other day where someone said you cannot make money on prevention. Um, and I think, I mean, this was, a, this was someone very smart, so he, he knew what he was talking about, and, uh, and you could disagree, but there is something to it. And if, there, if you cannot make money on prevention, that means that the system of incentives yep. is not in place uh, okay. for, uh, for you to be active in that space. Uh, that, is, that is completely crucial. So I think it would really take uh, a, a major um, transformation to get us towards the outcome-based system and the quality of data uh, is key because after all you would if, if it were to be an outcomes a properly constructed mm. outcomes based system you would really need to compare results mm. and that means you would need to have uh, well high quality and relevant data to start with yeah. in order to see what it is that uh, that you are getting okay so we're getting we're getting mixed messages here which is great can, can I just add quickly there? Absolutely. All right. So um, we're talking about older people here. I think patient-centric care yeah. It's also very key because sometimes 
uh, and just look for my experience. Sometimes we just want to let them go from the hospital, you know, get like, I don't want to use the word get rid of them. Right. So we're not providing that quality care to meet the need. So okay. they need to be also involved in their own care, even if they're 100, 150 years. So patient, you know, patient centric care will be another way we can focus on. Okay, okay. So we've, we've had a couple of examples here of, of where good exists, um, either imaginary or, or actual physical. Place. I think there's a, there's, there's, there, there is hope in this, and I should come to some questions in a minute from the audience. Finland, get this right, okay? If you go to Finland, they have a different attitude about involving older people in the community, working with young people, and that inter intergenerational piece seems to work. So there's hope there in Finland. Also Africa, Africa is rising as a, as a, as a, as a continent uh, with a low, um, low age uh, majority in the country. They're starting to look at that as being an asset. So watch Africa and watch Finland. So we've got six minutes, 25 seconds. That gives me time for questions from the audience. Any questions from, from, our, uh, uh, from our audience about the, the field of active aging? If not, I will come and put a microphone in front of you and ask you a question. <laughs> okay, well, ah, there's a question. Right, okay, trip over. Introduce yourself, ask the question. <clears throat> And a question has a question mark at the end of it. Okay. Wonderful. Good morning. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here and hear you. Um, I have a question for all of you. Carla, I'm Carla from Portugal. Uh, I'm working in a biotech company, but uh, I'm interested in this topic of uh, mental health. So my question is, what do you think that we can do, Our, all of us, not only the experts in the area, to prevent uh, mental health or to do something, small step, a small step, let's say, uh, to prevent... Uh, uh, mental uh, health decline? Yes. Okay, uh, I'll go first. Thank, Thank you so much uh, for that question. So, since we are talking about aging, older people, I think social isolation is one of the major problems for older people, and I resonate with you talking about mental health decline. So I think the, the solution comes from all of us. We all have parents, and we're all going to be old. It's, you know, being there for the older people. Uh, COVID has taught us something, you know, and this is one good thing from COVID, in, in quotes, uh, that we can support one another. I remember during COVID then that um, we started giving out leaflets to the older people going at all to their house for comfort, to see what can I do. So it starts from there because all the, people, all the old age is a, is a lonely age. So uh, we need to provide resources in the community now, not necessarily in the hospital, as much as possible getting them to age in place while providing social support. Aging Thank in you. place, okay. Any other input, quickly? Yeah, well, um, like I started out this uh, session um, uh, fortunately, in India, even now, there's a lot of social multi-generational families living in the same household, uh, which is uh, helping the, there's not much of an isolation problem. It's, uh, so uh, there is a level of uh, uh, calmness in the mind, so it's still uh, working well. However, the problem that we have there is they're not taking the time to go out for uh, walking, getting some exercise, they're just busy taking care of the household and busy adding up a busy. lot of stress, right? So, so I think there should be a nice mix to make sure that there is not much social isolation, but they're also getting their free me time so that they can do the things that they want to do and experiment with. I'll, I, me time, I'll get me time. Pavel, quickly, now, I have another question. And I will add uh, early diagnosis and access uh, issues. Uh, early diagnosis, that means you know, integrating uh, this into primary care so that you act before it is too late. And access opens the way to, to digital means that have to be part of the solution, eh? because there is a crisis of mental health care in many countries around the world, uh, just because the numbers are such that the professionals cannot uh, literally cater for them. Therefore, you, you need to integrate digital um, solutions into this equation. We're going to integrate digital solutions. We're going to integrate two more questions. Quickly, Joe. Question, please. Thanks. Brilliant. Question um, from my name's Joe. I work for a company that does prevention. 
You know, I'm a GP, occupational medicine, and I presented yesterday about the value of prevention, stopping people getting sick. And what's your question? The question is, what are the barriers that you find to implementing it? We found there's no moral barrier, there's no you know, health barrier, it's a financial barrier to me and to us. Do you have a similar barrier experience or are there other, are there organizational barriers? Please. Yeah. Um, I, I think the biggest barrier is um, psychological. Um, till people have an incident, they believe they are, um, it's not going to happen to them. So, uh, although prevent, uh, primary prevention is the best form of prevention, it's difficult to execute, so we focus on secondary prevention. Um, another key barrier from an African background would be accessibility to care. And, you know, in, talking about infrastructures and resources, so that is a great barrier. Uh, Africa is a large country, but we know that the older people, and we know about the, you know, the demographic, the economic status. So, you know, money, you know, finance is a barrier. Access is, an, is a barrier and, you know, uh, infra infrastructure. Misty Black has a question. Thank you. In the U.S., we really don't have a lot of multi-generational families living in the same home. So bringing care to the home has created a caregiver issue. How can digital help support the caregivers? Pavel. Yes, there are, uh, of course, uh, there is a need for uh, specialized solutions that address um, the, the needs of carers. But I think what is also needed is a holistic approach to digital, uh, meaning that you don't have the, the pockets of excellence in different areas, something for the carers, something for a, a, a patient-centric approach, but that you really begin to see all this being integrated into a system of care. And I, I, just, I just add to that, um, digital health will help this. Um, if we have uh, an interoperable system for care coordination for all in multiple scenario, you know, so that that's another way to look at it. Okay. Another way to increase longevity is not to get stressed. I've got 23 seconds in which to say thank you very much for our panelists. Big round of applause. Thank you for your participation and your active questions. If you're interested in this topic, there's a call for action, okay? This is about getting off your bottom. We're going to be launching a healthy aging ecosystem um, that's going to be global. So picking up input from India, Australia, the US, Canada, Europe and Africa. If you're interested in being involved with that ecosystem, it's a free to participate ecosystem. It will be virtual and it will be online. So if you're interested, um, you can visit our website, uh, follow me on LinkedIn and you'll see details in the coming months. But firstly, um, as I said, we've been involved with this work for over 20, 25, 30 years. People are still making the same excuses. Let's break down some silos and actually get on with it. Thank you very much.